So Keith, you you gave a presentation on the, on the elections. Uh, what surprised you uh, mainly? Uh, uh, if we look at the results of the parliamentary elections. I was primarily surprised by the success of the Narodny Front, uh, and I had thought that Poroshenko would, would uh, have a stronger position in the, in the general party vote uh, than he did. He's clearly going to have a strong representation in the, in the single mandate districts. Um, but I was surprised by the success of Yatsenyuk's party. And um, why? Uh, it was starting from a very low position not very long ago, uh, and it overlaps to a certain extent with some of the other parties that were already in the pool, so I would not have thought uh, it would have been able to completely supplant in many ways the, the uh, Poroshenko in, in the former west and central areas that were the province of Badkivshina. I thought Poroshenko would have picked up more of that vote. Okay. What makes uh, Yatsenyuk popular in Ukraine? Uh, I think he inherited a powerful party organization, so I'm not sure whether this is a genuine uh, measure of his popularity mm -hmm. rather than his ability to run this campaign and to get out votes on his behalf. But part of it was clearly that he, he reached out to um, uh, the heads of the, the voluntary battalions uh, and brought them into mm -hmm. his party. Uh, I think the real story of this election is how poorly Svoboda did given the low turnout in the south and the east, mm -hmm. we're already dealing with a more nationalist electorate. Uh, and Svoboda did not do well in that electorate. And I think it's largely because Yatsenyuk stole their votes. Mm -hmm. So do you think that there are some elements of nationalism in uh, the vote towards uh, Narodny Front? Yes. I think that that's part of Yatsenyuk's strategy is he wraps up his his uh, his oligarch party in uh, in a nationalist framework uh, as a way of getting popular success. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are worried about the competition between Poroshenko and Yatsenyuk, thinking of the competition after the Orange Revolution uh, between uh, Yushchenko and Timoshenko. What are you thinking about that? This competition. I think the imperative of having reforms is. Uh, is going to bring them together and it's going to be a period of great difficulty and hardship and so i think their own both of their political survival rests on cooperating on a reform program uh, and there's always a risk that the government's going to be overthrown outside of an electoral process that will have a third maidan and and uh, or a coup and i think they both feel that very acutely and they they're going to want to get something done in the in the wake of this election okay. so I, i'm not as concerned about that as some commentators you are thinking more about a kind of exchange of services between them based on the fact that uh, they have to face common issues. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you are working on, on Ukraine and post-Soviet countries for a long time. What about, uh, what were your feelings this year uh, about what is going on in Ukraine and war in Donbass? Uh, you know, I went through long periods of feeling too demoralized to write, uh, particularly as a result of the war. Uh, and less, I mean, the Maidan was very exciting. Mm -hmm. I also had a newborn baby, so I was up all night <laughs> anyway. So I was watching Kramatska TV, you know, with an infant in my arm. So I have very, you know, oh. warm, nostalgic okay. feelings about that, yeah. about that period. But I think in the spring, once it turned violent, you know, the, the killings in Odessa and then the war in the Donbass, there's just a sense, and, and the lies that were being told on all sides, you just start to lose hope in humanity a little bit. But I, that's restored somewhat now, and I'm, I'm back to, uh, it's a very exciting time for a country that I care quite a lot about and that I've been researching for a long time. So it's, uh, it's of great interest to me. Thank you very much. Thank you.